Let me tell you what's happening to me. Let's talk about me for a minute. All right? This is a personal experience that I'm having. Over the weekend, I wrote a piece. It was kind of based on one of the shows I did. It was called uh, uh, President Troll on the Planet Hysteria. And it was the most read piece, as several of my pieces I'm proud to announce, was the most read piece. I wrote it for PJ Media, but it was on Real Clear Politics. And it was the most read piece on Real Clear Politics that day. And all weekend long, I got attacked by the Trumpers. Okay, and the Trumpers were writing me, sending in comments and all this stuff. You're a, you're a rhino. You're not a real Trump supporter. You're dishing our president and all this stuff. And it was about, you know, it was all the stuff I say on the show that, yes, President Trump has many flaws and he does all these things that are wrong, but the press has gone, has, has become hysterical and they are just attacking him in ways that don't really make sense in terms of, for instance, the way they covered, oh, let's just say Barack Obama. You know, so it's kind of, it is the way they cover George W. Bush, but it's amped up to shrill. Yesterday, I did a show basically talking about some of this and some of the things that I see the press doing. And then people started attacking me for being a Trump, you know, uh, apologist, that everything Trump does, I make an excuse for. So I'm getting it from both sides. OK, now that that can either be a good sign or a bad sign. That either means you're an idiot and everybody can see you're an idiot or it means that you're actually telling the truth and you're offending everybody. And I want to at least try to explain why I am saying the things that I'm saying, because it's not about Donald Trump to me. See, I think people have Trump blindness. I think Trump is a big, eccentric, interesting character. And I'm all in favor of talking about that. But that's not what's going on. That is not the let, let's put it this way. Everybody has to pick what the story is. Everybody says, oh, the real story is this or the real story is that. And I do not think right this minute that the real story is Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a flawed guy. I've been saying this forever. And there are things about him that I really hate. I had I had a, about a 5% fear when I voted for Donald Trump and I voted for him because I thought Hillary I had a 100% fear of what Hillary was. I had a 5% fear that Donald Trump was Hitler. <laughs> They're always saying, oh, Republican presidents are always Hitler. I thought, this guy, I'm pretty sure, 95% sure that's not true, but I got this little bit of a doubt in there, okay? So I, so I voted for him, you know, squ kind of squinting my eyes and kind of reaching out to the vo in the voting booth and, you know, taking the hit of this 5% fear. That 5% fear is now largely gone. I do not think, even think he's much of an authoritarian. I mean, I think he's acting well within the guidelines of the American Constitution. I don't think he's usurped anybody's power. I don't think he's stepped on anybody. Nobody is getting arrested for making a video in the dead of night as they did during the Trump, during the Obama administration. Uh, no reporter has uh, reported getting bugged as they did during the Obama administration. You know, so I see him acting within certain parameters. That, that, that are really important to me, the parameters of the Constitution, those are really important to me. So my fear about him has kind of receded. Now, do I agree with everything he does? By no means do I agree with everything he does. He's far to the left of me. He has very, very Democrat, big government instincts that make me crazy. I don't like it, all that. But still, acting within those parameters. Plus, when I, when I voted for him, I said that my best guess was that he was going to be a kind of mediocre, middle-of-the-road president. He's been better than that because he's done some things to the right that I really like, like the re rolling back uh, regulations and, of course, the appointment of the judges, uh, Gorsuch and the other judges he's put on. So why do I keep not attacking him? Why am I not picking on everything he does and saying, well, this was wrong and that was wrong and this was wrong? It's because I feel that the press and the state meaning the permanent state. I don't know what to call them. This phrase deep state sounds like too much of a thriller novel, but the permanent state, we'll call it the bureaucracy, and the press are teaming up to overthrow the results of an American election. People elected this guy. Which people? Do you have that map? Do you have the map of the yeah. election? Which people voted for him? Those people, all those people between <laughs> Manhattan and L.A., like all of them, I think, like Trump won by 7 million, I think, people in the heartland of America. All those people voted for him, and the press has gone insane, and the state, the bureaucracy, has gone insane. The, you remember what, what Trump said during his inaugural, remember his dark inaugural address? Do we have the, just that one quick cut of Trump during the inaugural number eight? Today... We are not merely transferring power from one administration to another or from one party to another, but we are transferring power from Washington, D.C. and giving it back to you, the people. Power doesn't like when you do that, okay? It does not like it. Now, if Trump were Hitler, if I thought Trump was really a bad guy who was going to subvert 
our country and subvert our Constitution, then it would all be about him. But since it's not, and I can I could sit here and say, oh, I agree with this and agree and disagree with that, and this he did wrong, and this he did right, and I like this, you know, the good Trump, bad Trump thing, which I think is fine. I, I think that's fine. But Trump, to me, is a manifestation of a, a, what they call a cri de coeur, a cry from the heart of the American people. They, are, they sensed something was going terribly, terribly wrong in the, with the direction we were going, and it was Trump who enunciated it. Now, did he, enunci it out of, did, he, did he enunciate it out of cynicism? Was he just picking up on it and repeating it back to them? That's, that's a good question. We can talk about that another time. But he was that cry from the American people, and it's mm -hmm. that cry, it's that cry that our media, which is a Democrat hack machine, and the bureaucracy are fighting against and trying to overturn. And that's why I keep talking about that. It's not, to, it's not to apologize for Trump. It has nothing to do with Donald Trump for me. It has to do with the manifestation of that cry of the people, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. But let me just talk about yesterday's latest great big scandal, all right? Every day <clears throat> is a great big scandal. And I'm sorry, but for me, the president firing Comey may have been badly handled, but that's not a scandal. And when the president fires a guy who works at his pleasure, that is not a scandal. I'm sorry. If, if I thought it was going to overturn an investigation, yes, scandal. It, will it? No. Absolutely not. There's absolutely no way that firing James Comey. I mean, if, if Trump now appoints Ivanka, like I said, to the FBI, then then that's a scandal. But if he appoints what, we're, what we suspect he will, some typical uh, you know law enforcement guy or something like that, it's going to be fine. All the investigations that have turned up nothing for the last ten months will still go on. The press will still be able to blow them out of proportion. So yesterday, 